Who has got so far? Um, size, geometry, weight, budget, workspace, material, the items in and out process, like it's a conveyor, uh, if they need to be palletized, uh, if they're random when they come in, um, and then is there an unknown process that we could automate also to get more money? Uh, <laughs> different objects, if it's just one same object, or different things. It is. That is something you do whenever you walk around somebody's facility. Yeah, just ask you look for the next. You look for the next job. <laughs> High temperature resistance. If they need it, it's going to be close to the furnace. For a timeline, they need to come by, uh, and then how fast the parcel can be in and out like in a minute or. Yep. <laughs> All right, so you guys, you guys got a good idea what you're going to ask? You can start. All right. So, um, just take, uh, take like 15 seconds to rank your questions in the order of importance to you. Take just a second to, to rank your questions. Figure out which you think is the most important, least important question. Or at least the order in which you want to ask the questions. All right, you guys ready to go? That's right. You got the first couple? Okay. All right, so what group are you guys? Automation, Nation, and? Monkey King. Okay. Automation, Monkey King. All right, so uh, what's the first thing you're going to ask me when you get to my office to talk about the project? Anybody else have budget as the first question? Anybody not have budget as the first question? All right, so what's the second thing you were going to ask then? So workspace. Uh, anybody else have something else second? So everybody had workspace layout for their second question? You had, so how much time do we have to answer the question? So when, when do we need the answer? Uh, anybody else got something else second? What do you guys get second? Uh, what their current capacity is and what they want to. So current, current throughput, we'll call it? Anybody else have a different second or third? So everybody had budget first. How much money are you going to give me for this? Right? Would you guys have second? Workspace, would you guys have second? Say, all right, what do you guys got for third? What's the orientation of the parts? Incoming orientation.
What do you guys got? So, what's the part made out of? And by part, we mean work, work piece here, right? Uh, what do you guys got? So we'll call that environmental conditions. There's more to environmental conditions than just temperature, right? There's, is it in an abrasive area? Are there like, is there dust blowing on it? Is it in the water, spraying water on it or oil, right? So. What do you guys got? Yeah, that's a good one. For a second there, I couldn't count from eight to nine. But I knew 10 wasn't next. <laughs> so it's pretty stealthy. I could have written 10 next to you. You wouldn't have known the difference. Let's see if I can zoom out. What else you got? Six, seven, and nine, yeah. We could have saved space on the paper. Um, what else you got after that then? Anybody? What's next? What do you guys got next? Uh, we have Unless you didn't think the shape of the part was important. Oh, we did. No, we did. I uh, figured that was on there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we had a couple other things like what is right now. Uh, All right, so durability of the workpiece. Forklift. So you want to know, do you got any other problems? Anything, anything critical that we've left off our list? So, yeah, and you, you had this too, right? So how does, how does the workpiece arrive? So how does the workpiece get to the work cell? Anything else critical that we've forgotten? So that's sort of like how do we arrange them in the basket? So, but we'll call it. Right, what does the basket look like? What's the basket geometry material? What is the basket? Anything else critical that we've forgotten? Well, we need to have a 
Yeah, what's the variation? What is the variation here, right? Because it could just be that there's um, uncertainty in the size, right? Depends on the process. Anything else critical that we've forgotten? It's okay to ask more questions later. So you mean currently, or what are they willing to accept? So that's actually a really good question. And I've never had anybody ask that question in this exercise before. And I don't think I've ever thought of asking that question during an initial meeting. It's typically you tell them you need to maintain it every six months, two months. Or as the system gets in service, they determine what the maintenance frequency is based on how well you designed it, right? That's a great question, though. No going in, how frequently can you afford to maintain this? Um, hmm. Anything else critical that we've forgotten? All right, let's uh, let's start answering some of these questions then. First off, they are not going to tell you their budget until you've told them a price. Maybe. Very very rarely they could say we can afford to spend fifty thousand dollars on this, or we can afford to spend. $175,000 on this. But if you're the consultant coming in, and you're, or you're the hi person they've hired to, de if they've hired you as an employee to design it, then it's likely that they'll tell you you've got a budget of this much to solve this problem. But if you're coming in, you're trying to sell them a solution, it's not very likely that they're gonna tell you up front what the budget is. On the other hand, this is very important information, right? Because it, it, it allows you to understand, am I building a Starship transporter? Or am I building a better wheelbarrow? Right? Um, so it gives you, so, all right, but, so if they're not going to tell you the budget, what are you going to do? Maybe. I've, 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 um, I've been to some very expensive sales training that tells you how to sell stuff. And it's one of the things you learn there is as soon as you tell them your price, now you have no leverage. So maybe not the best selling technique to give them a price, but yeah. So what are you gonna do? Yeah, you're gonna try to figure out. Uh, so what you might wanna do is tell them how much they can save. If you can figure out what their current process costs, and they might tell you what their current process costs. So right now we got, where are we? Let's, so let's infer some stuff about their, oh, the other thing is you're gonna listen to them while they're talking, because they may say things like, we had somebody in here last year to quote this and it was $50,000. And you look out on the floor and you don't see a robot. So now you have a data point, $50,000 was too much money. Um, but all right, so what's it currently cost them? 12 man hours a day, and they're trying to move these people to some place that's more useful to them. So what's a man hour cost? What's that? 12 bucks? Is that what it costs? So if, I'm, if, I'm, if it costs me 12 bucks an hour for a man hour, that means I'm paying you about nine, which is under Massachusetts minimum wage right now. Because, you know, you guys, t you guys pay taxes, right? When you, when you get a paycheck, they take taxes out. Do you know the employer matches that tax? So add 50% to whatever you think the worker's salary is. And so if we think the worker's doing this job, so you see the workers that work in a factory, 
Um, some of the time they're loading parts into baskets. Some of the time they might be, I'll say maybe they're getting 15 bucks an hour. So if they're getting 15 bucks an hour, we got to have 18 bucks an hour. Something like that, 20 bucks an hour. Round it to 20, it's good easy numbers. So 20 times 12, what's that? So they're currently spending $240 a day, uh, man hours, so people together. So like four people, three hours, three people, four hours. Um, three people, four hours, I guess, right? Because I told you three people. All right, so 240 bucks a day to load these baskets right now. How long do you think they want to pay for their robot system? So if they're going to invest capital in their automation system. They do think, so there's opportunity cost in addition to this 240, right? In addition to the $240 a day, there's some opportunity cost. So let's call it $500 a day. Maybe that opportunity cost is significant. Right. So that's why we get the we bumped it from 240 to 500. So we doubled it right there. And and so we're just guessing here, but you can you can sort of infer this by talking to the people, figuring it out. All right, so $500 a day. How long do you think they want to spend paying for their robot? They're going to make a capital investment to build a new system. When do they want their money back? You think one year they want their money back the first year? If you can sell somebody a system and they make their money back in the first year, there's a high likelihood that they're going to want to buy it. If it takes them more than three years to get their money back, they're going to be really skeptical. So, so $500 a day, what's that in a year? Figure 20 days. Well, figure, figure 20 days a week, because they're not working 24-7, are they? Oh, sorry, a month. 20 days a month. Five days a week, four weeks in a month. So 20 times 12 times 500? $120,000. So, so maybe $120,000. All right. So we've inferred their budget now. We think that they'll go up to $100,000, $120,000 to fix this problem. OK. So we've got, we've got a budget number. If we actually could figure that out from the initial contact, right? Workspace layout. There's a furnace. There's an aisle here. There's a wall over here. You guys can't, can you guys see this? All right. There's a wall over here. There's a doorway there. There's a doorway over here, and there's some yeah, furnace a little bit bigger than that. And so aisle here, there's an overhead door that goes out right there, an aisle that's about four feet wide that goes here, and here there's a door there. Currently, they do the work here. And so this is about 20, 20 feet here. So that makes this about 20 feet here. Oh, and it might be wider than four feet. Call it six feet wide. 
there because they do drive fork trucks through there. So it's probably about six feet wide. Any questions about the workspace layout now? Now that we've, we've walked through the workspace, we've made a sketch. What else? That furnace is not going to move. The doors are not going to move. Um, I mean, so if you were building the facility, if you were... Ah, uh, but we could potentially move the... We could potentially move the aisle, right? If the aisle went this way, and you had a work area there, and honestly, I don't remember how far away this wall is and that door, so you may be able to do that. Okay. What else? How do we have the boxes or baskets get to the front? There's no. Like between um, between here and here, where it, so there's a chain rack that brings them into the furnace. So you got to lift it up onto that chain rack, and then you. Um, there's a drive on the chain, so you press a button, it goes into the furnace. Um, currently, they load the ba baskets, sort of leaned up against the wall. They pick it up with a forklift, with a lifting hook, pick it up, bring it over, hang it on the chain. And they didn't ask us to put them on the chain. They asked us to fill the baskets up so far. But that might be future work, right? But if you put the baskets up there, then you fill them. Any other work, work cell questions? Oh, somewhere, somewhere down here we asked about the environment. Right down here, environmental conditions. I don't know, the furnace is operating at like 1,000 degrees. Let's just say it's hot in the summer. Could get to 120 degrees outside the furnace regularly. Probably not much more than 120 degrees. Where are the parts coming in? Uh, they come in at this, there's a loading dock door right here. They come in there. But like, where are they being loaded from? Oh, yeah, somebody asked that, right? Um, they take a, uh, a wooden crate about half the size of one of these desks. And it's full of the parts in haphazard orientation. Oh, somebody asked what the parts look like? They're bearing races. They vary, um, this would be a big one. They go down to about a half inch ID on these. Um, thick disc can go down to a little bit under a quarter of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch. And they can go up to about twice this big. So the work pieces are bearing races. What else were we asking? What's next? So we got part geometry. Oh, you want to know current throughput and desired throughput. So they don't need to increase the throughput at this time. They just need to do the same work that those guys do in 12 man hours. Um, off the top of my head, I'm trying to remember. I think it was about six baskets a day. Part geometry, um, development time. That's always a good one, too. Because they always want it done yesterday. But it takes some finite amount of time to do it, right? You got about six months from when you get the signed purchase order to get them at least a warm, fuzzy feeling that you're going to have a working solution. 
So we'll call it six months to the working solution. Uh, workspace layout, development time, current throughput, desired throughput. Yeah, they don't need an increase now, but maybe they will in the future. Uh, incoming part orientation, random. <coughs> part material mass, they're steel, they're about this heavy. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually the issue. So these are going into a heat treating furnace. So they've been machined, and they're machined in the annealed state. They need to get heat treated so they can become hard, so that when the, bearing, the ball, balls from the ball bearings roll on the race, it doesn't wear it out really fast. Um, if you just randomly jumble them into the basket and load it in the furnace, they will shadow each other, and they won't all get to the same temperature, and they won't all get heat treated the same way. So they actually have a very specific stacking pattern that they do. There, now it's off. Um, very specific stacking pattern. So the, uh, the baskets, uh, if we look at a side view of the basket, you put a row of bearing races across the bottom of the basket with some space between them. Actually, more space than that. And then you put the next one and then except you have them all go all the way out to the edge here. So you want to have as much open space around the workpiece as possible. <coughs> so they overlap them just a little bit because they got to put more than one in the furnace. I mean the other thing they could do is they could hang each one on a wire as it goes into the furnace, right? So that wouldn't, if you had a really long furnace and a long chain conveyor, it might work. But, uh, but it would take a lot more space. Okay, so, oh, the baskets. The basket, so about 18 inches. About 24 inches, like that, and side view is about six inches deep. And they're, yeah, metal wire baskets. Each, each crate will have all the same size in it. But, they, but you won't always be doing the same size part. So you need to be adaptable to be able to handle different size parts, but they won't be randomly sorted in the crate. So if we get a crate full of these, it'll be a crate full of these. Any, any other questions we need to answer quickly? Move my questions. Part geometry. So on this question number 10, what else do you need? I would think about that. I'd try to get information about that, but at the initial meeting, I don't think I would ask that necessarily. Um, now, you may be able to incorporate loading these into the furnace with your loading the baskets thing, and that may be a bonus to them. Uh, but I think on the initial contact, if they've specifically brought you in for a particular question, then focus on that when you get started, but be, keep your eyes open as you walk through the factory to see what else you might be able to help them with. Um, how does the workpiece get into the work cell in a crate? How do we arrange the parts in the basket? We did that. Uh, what does the basket look like? Oh, interesting th thing about those baskets, they go in and out of a heat treating furnace for their entire life. 
they don't ever look the same twice. So they de the basket itself deviates in shape a little bit in between each run. And no two baskets are exactly the same. Um, all right, get back together with your group, or the group you were working with, and come up with an initial idea for how you would solve the problem. <laughs>